Field effect transistors, or FETs, are some of the most important components in modern electronics. They're used everywhere, in amplifiers, microcontrollers, logic circuits, and power stages. In this video, we'll go through the main type of FETs, the N and P channel J FETs, and the depletion and enhancement MOSFETs. Obviously, in the last chapter, we covered BJTs, so we will not be looking at them anymore. We'll see how each one works, what voltages turn them on and off, and where you can use them. Obviously, I'm going to keep this very basic as we will cover them in more detail as we go through the chapter. And that brings me on to the reason why. So I'm making this video because we are moving on to chapter 3 from the Art of Electronics. We have completed chapter 2 and we are moving on to chapter 3 from Art of Electronics. And this chapter is all about FETs. So this is going to be useful to have a little bit of understanding of how they work and what turns them on. We'll see how each type of FET works, what voltages can be used to turn them on and off. So before we do all of that, a quick thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay make professional quality PCBs for hobby and production use. They offer PCB fabrication, assembly, 3D printing and CNC machining, all at very affordable prices. I've used PCBWay for many of my own projects and the quality has always been excellent. So if you're designing your own FET circuits or any electronic projects, check out PCBWay.com. The link's down in the description below. Let's start with a quick overview of where FETs fit into the world of transistors. So at the top level, um, I've got a tree over here showing transistors in general, which is basically devices that control current using either voltage or current. The first big category, which is the BJTs, we covered in the last chapter. You've got your two basic types, the NPN and the PNP and their current control devices. The amount of base current determines how much current flows from the collector to the emitter. We will not be looking at BJTs in any detail for this chapter. The other two branches are both FETs. The first of that is the JFET. JFET or junction FET comes in two types. So you got N channel and P channel. And then last category over here is the MOSFET or metal oxide semiconductor FET and FET stands for field effect transistor. So a MOSFET can be depletion or enhancement. The depletion types can come in N-channel and P-channel, but I think P-channel is very rare. So I've not included it on the tree, but it is a thing. And then enhancement can come in N-channel and P-channel. So in total, we have a large number of different types of FETs. And when I was learning electronics, this did get very confusing for me as uh, basically I would just avoid JFETs in general and probably just stick to using enhancement MOSFETs, P-channel and N-channel. But I think um, getting a little bit of understanding over here is going to be very useful for this chapter. So let's start at the top of the FET family with the N-channel JFET, one of the simplest types and a great way to understand how voltage can control the current flow through a semiconductor channel. So a N-channel JFET is a normally on device. So that means when the gate source voltage, which is the gate source voltage over here, is zero, the current can easily flow from drain to source, or the other way around, depending on how you look at it. The gate itself is made of P-type material, forming a reverse bias PN junction around the N-type channel. As you make the gate more negative, so as you take this voltage down, when compared to this voltage over here, this will reduce the current that flows and once you go past around 2 volts, this does depend on the type of component you're using, but typically around 2 volts, negative, and the N-channel JFET will start turning off. If you go positive on this voltage, so basically above zero, you forward bias the junction, which you normally want to avoid because you're reducing your input impedance for the JFET. The second type is the P-channel JFET. So P-channel JFET works the same way as the N-channel, but with all the polarities reversed. It's normally on when VGS voltage is zero and you gotta take VGS voltage positive to basically turn the device off. And if you go negative, you will forward bias and start losing input impedance. Next, we are going to look at depletion type N-channel MOSFETs. I'm not going to talk about P-channel depletion MOSFETs because they're fairly rare. This one also conducts when the gate voltage is zero compared to the source voltage. So very similar to a JFET, but in this case, the gate is insulated. So you get very little current flowing from the gate to uh, the other junctions. To turn off a depletion type N-channel MOSFET, 
you basically have to take VGS voltage less than minus two volts. So again, very similar operation to the JFET. Next, we're going to look at enhancement mode uh, MOSFETs. And the first one we're looking at is the N channel, which is kind of the most common type you'll probably come across, or I generally do anyway. Unlike the depletion type, it has no channel to begin with. So when VGS is zero, uh, the MOSFET is completely off. So there's no current flowing from source to drain. When you apply a positive voltage, typically above two volts, the N channel MOSFET will start conducting. Obviously to switch it back off again, you gotta take the gate voltage back down to zero. Lastly, let's look at the P channel enhancement type MOSFET. It's exactly the same concept as the N channel, but the voltages are reversed. Again, this is off when the gate voltage is zero and you gotta take the gate voltage negative with respect to source in order to turn on the P-channel MOSFET. Now on the last slide over here, I have a summary um, just so that you know what kind of voltages you need to apply in order to turn on and off a MOSFET and a JFET and the different types of channels that you get. So a lot of variations to keep in mind. Now that we've gone through the different types, now that we've gone through the different types of FETs, and how they work. Uh, we'll quickly go through question one from chapter three from the Art of Electronics. It's a good example in using a JFET to design a real circuit. Question one or exercise 3.1 from the Art of Electronics says use the 2N5484 measured curves in figure 3.21 to design a JFET current source to deliver 1 milliamp. Then it says now ponder the fact that the specified IDSS of a 2N 5484 is 1 milliamp minimum and 5 milliamps maximum. So IDSS stands for drain to source current with the gate sorted to the source pin. So it's basically the maximum current that can flow through a JFET when the gate source voltage is zero. So let's start off by designing the current source. Now in the question, um, we need to design a current source to deliver 1 milliamp. So this is our basic uh, NJFET symbol, which is what I'm going to use. I've given a 15 watt power supply, but this has not been specified in the uh, book. We're going to use figure 3.21 from the Art of Electronics. So just to show you that very quickly, we are basically using this figure to set a current of one milliamp. So you can see ID over here and ID over here with VDS voltages. And this is basically a zoomed in version of this graph over here. So you can see this goes from 0 to 20 and this goes from 0 to 0 0.5. Now we need to set 1 milliamp of current, which you can see is over here. And a steady 1 milliamp of current with a wide range of VDS voltages is with a gate voltage, with a gate source voltage of minus 0 0.6. So that's what we can aim for on, on this uh, simulation. So what we need is a minus 0 0.6 voltage from here to here and we want one milliamp flowing through it. So if we want to generate 0 0.6 volts over here, we can use a resistor. We know that one milliamp is going to flow through. So a basic calculation, 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.001 gives us a resistance value of 600 ohms. And we're basically using this graph to do that calculation and we're trying to get one milliamp of current. So we're aiming for minus 0 0.6 volts. Now this JFET simulation might be different and we might get slight variation in the current that we get from the circuit. Now I want to connect this up to ground over here. So what happens with this additional resistor over here is that when current flows through, this resistor obviously drops voltage and that raises the source of the JFET. So the source goes high, but the gate is tied to zero. So you start getting negative VGS voltage. And with a 600 ohm resistor and one milliamp of current, you're going to get minus 0 0.6 volts. The MOSFET they've used in the question is 2N5484, and we have a simulation model of that MOSFET as well. So I'm just going to use that and see what happens. Let me get rid of this resistor, add a wire back in, and we get roughly 1.4 milliamps. So what this means is that the um, the characteristic is not the same as what we have on this graph and hence we're getting a slight variation. And we can manually adjust this to get what we want. So let's, um, so we're getting too much current from this. If I increase the resistor value over here, you can see from the graph as VGS goes 
down or goes negative more, the ID current goes down as well. We are currently aiming for 0 0.6. Uh, if you try to go for, let's say, minus 0 0.9, then that might bring us closer to the current that we actually want. So let's try 900, uh, let's try 900 ohms and see what we get from this circuit. So 1.05 milliamps, very close. Uh, I'm just gonna trial and error it at one milliamp. So that's close enough. We're eight microamps out and we basically have a current source that can deliver one milliamp as the question wanted. Obviously there are some differences in the simulation. The graph we have is for a measured uh, JFET. And this basically highlights the issue that the question is asking about as well. For the second part of the question, the book is asking, now ponder the fact that the specified IDSS of a 2N5484 is 1 milliamp minimum and 5 milliamps maximum. So this is why you get all that variation. So if you design um, RS, which is basically this resistor over here, to force 1 milliamp assuming a typical IDSS, then if you get another device, you know, in production or whatever, then uh, you might get a device that produces less than one milliamp with the same RS. Or if a part was closer to the five milliamp limit, then you'll get a current source that produces much more than one milliamp. So what the question is trying to get at is you can't rely on IDSS to uh, be reliable because uh, it will cause a lot of variations in your design. The measured curve lets you compute RS for a given measured transistor, but the circuit will only work for that specific transistor. So obviously there are some practical things uh, you can do to try and adjust this. So you can design the um, RS, or in our case it's R1, to be a adjustable resistor with a fixed value resistor so that you can fine tune it if you want to. But obviously that's not very production friendly. You can select parts, again, not very production friendly. You can use an active current source sink with an op amp or something like that, which compensates for itself or you can design for the worst and the best case and then add a headroom on top. So if you want to ensure at least one milliamp, even for low IDSS, you must design around the minimum IDSS, but that typically means no RS and then you'll have too much current in other cases. So you can design for minimums or maximums if you know that's what you want to do. So from the measured curves, we can calculate a source resistor uh, for this JFET uh, current source circuit to get one milliamp but it's not reliable um, in basically if you're designing more than one board or if you're, you know, plan to use multiple um, 2N5484s because the characteristic is only valid for that specific IC or that specific transistor. So in practice, you want to make it adjustable and trim the device or have some sort of um, active current source to get a stable one milliamp. So that basically wraps up the video. We've covered JFETs and MOSFETs their basic operation. I hope this video helped you to understand the basics of how these MOSFETs and JFETs work and how you can turn them on to use them in your application. I want to say a massive thank you to all the channel members who support engineering experience. Your support genuinely helped these electronic videos come in. If you found this useful, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icons so you don't miss the next video. We'll be going through more practical circuits and obviously more exercises from the art of electronics. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.